Yeah, good morning, everyone, and welcome to class. Yeah, today we'll be, we'll be looking at introduction to JavaScript 2. And as we all know, we had an introduction to JavaScript in our first class, and this is also continuing because JavaScript is actually good and you can finish it in one class. And even for you to keep on learning JavaScript, JavaScript is a long life learning stuff, so you have to keep on learning it as, as long as you're a developer. You have to keep on learning JavaScript. Yeah. So, uh, we'll be having the next thing on our slide here is overview of JavaScript as well. No? Yeah, I'll just say JavaScript is JavaScript is, is the functionality you add to a website, and I'll put it in, in a layman term. If you want to build a house, you have the foundation, you have the, the bricks. That is what HTML does to the, that's what HTML does to the JavaScript, to the web page. It's HTML creates the blocks and how it's going to look like. Give it the structure out. CSS spark. CSS gives it the beautification, all the beautiful aesthetics you're going to put in it and the, the painting and the likes. That's what CSS is going to do. And for you to have electricity in the house, for you to have other things working, like other, you want to have a sliding gate, you have to have electricity in general. That's what JavaScript is to the website. And for that, JavaScript is actually, then you can use JavaScript for backend. You can use JavaScript for game development, mobile development, and many other stuff in which is beyond our scope of learning. And for you to know JavaScript, JavaScript, JavaScript takes you to be more diligent than just beyond HTML and CSS. You have to, you have to be open to learning that for JavaScript relationship, it's the death blow us back as a developer. You can't, you can't, you can't, the moment you say you don't want to stop, you want to stop learning JavaScript as a front end developer, I think that's where you begin to pick the own way because even till now, there are still much updates being added to JavaScript. And I would stop there. Yeah, JavaScript is a, is an high level programming language and it's multi paradigm. Like other languages, C++ and every other thing, JavaScript is an high-level programming language, which whereby you do so many things with it, and it is usable across all platforms. And as we saw in our first class, JavaScript is easy to learn, and I must tell you that just know the basis of JavaScript, and you'll be able to fly high. So, yeah. So our class today, we'll be looking at variables. We'll be looking at variables. Yeah, what are variables in JavaScript? Variables are simply data, uh, are simple storage places where the uh, data are being stored. Because in JavaScript, you, you deal, you work a lot with, with data and that's the only way you can actually assess, that's the only way you can actually assess information you are going to be using. Yeah, you can't just write it in just a normal script. You can't just write it as a normal thing and expect it to work. You have to store them in, in variables. And for, for JavaScript people to know that these, stuff, these um, values are stored in variables, you have to have a name accessing it. And there are two types of variables. There are local variables and there are global variables. Local variables are variables which are only, are only um, accessible to your program in a little, a little scope. Like, okay, now you have a boundary. So let me just use it as a local government in Nigeria. Nigeria, you have a local government chairman. He only has jurisdiction over the local government is, is overseen. And he doesn't have jurisdiction over the state. That is what a local variable in layman terms can look like in JavaScript. 
local area, it only is only accessible to a few number of stores which it can do. But for a global variable, just like the president of Nigeria, which he oversees, he can work into any local government and still have access and he'll still be given that respect and the honor that he's due. But for a local government chairman, he can go to Abuja and begin to preside over Nigeria. Based contracts. So for global variables which are defined, they are accessible to your program, for your JavaScript program, anywhere you want to use them. And you would know more of local and global variables when you get into when you dive deep into functions. When you dive deep into functions, and for that, that function is actually. Function is actually a large school in under aspect of JavaScript. Okay. In JavaScript, there are a few ways you can actually declare variables and uh, which are which are cons, let, or bar. Bar, as you can actually see, uh, if you check old code base, if you have watched previous from few tutorials, from early days tutorials on JavaScript on YouTube, or probably now you would see that you would if you read some early code base, you will see that the bar is being used. But as JavaScript started to breed up to years 2015, as you can also soon, that was where the likes of const and, and let came in. And for cons, I would define const as a simple variable. Whereby you can actually change later because let is actually flexible. You can actually use let anywhere in your code and you can change it and you can just okay, you name it something here, and eventually along the line in your code, you can reassign that variable to another value and you are going to be fine. Yeah, for cons, for cons, cons are variables that are actually constant, which can't change. Something something for cost are your name, except for uh female counterparts who actually does change your name. And for you to be able to change a cost in JavaScript, costs generally are not uh, are immutable. Let me just use that word. They can't be changed because they are always constant, a constant variable at every point in time. So but for but if, the other ways you can actually mutate const, which is actually beyond the scope of this class. Yeah, for var, var are still, some people still make use of var in the sense that maybe for just code based legacy, the people are so accustomed to some, let me say, old traditional code base, they are so accustomed to it that okay, they don't want to, they don't want to move into the modern JavaScript. They are still okay. This is our. Is our legacy, and we can actually we can actually skip going on. So that's why we see some some JD that's job description. You see, you have to have ability to know. You have to know var how to use var. Even till now, till date, var are still being used, but, but not as widely used as before. Because as you go on, you would actually get some places in your code where you might actually want to. Make use of that, and you would actually it's actually much easier for you to, to do it with that. So I think with the little thing I've said, you can actually go into our PS to see how it works. Okay, before that, yeah, there are ways in which I we saw in our last class how we can actually access um JavaScript either via console. Where we use our Google Home console or you write it in the script tag. You write it in the script tag, or you actually do what? Or you write it in an inbuilt in your HTML, that inline, inline script. That's it. So we'll be looking at today, we'll be looking at, at this is just normal way we'll be doing it. You have your normal folder, that's HTML. CSS and JavaScript. So in our CSS, in our, in our folder here, yeah, I just have a little, just a little one line, few lines of few lines of HTML and inline styling. 
give our page a little information and I link my HTML through the script file that text type JavaScript. File. So now we would now we would I will go live and so I will show you what I have. I, I guess you can see my screen now. Uh, we have this direction to JavaScript. Uh, this is. And I'll be making uh, CS, uh, HTML currently does not really have anything to do with our, with our script part because I can actually come here to the console and just type. Say we are typing let in was so spelling mean name is undefined. And if I do tell me the string. So basically we have We have we have it and it's running the way it is. So uh, as long as you if you are writing, you can't keep writing your script, you can't keep writing your the JavaScript in your you can't keep writing your JavaScript in your console because you actually need it for much, you actually writing much lines of JavaScript and eventually it won't once I once I reload this page now, everything is gone. What I wrote before is then it's just this type of and you will keep on doing what you keep on writing and you don't have access to. So that's why you write a JavaScript in your script and you launch it and it works accordingly. Yeah, so we'll be going into Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the next thing we have on our slide is um, data types in JavaScript. There are two types of there are two types of data types in JavaScript, which is object and primitive uh, object and primitive value. Yeah. For objects in JavaScript, you actually have access to it. You can actually declare multiple, multiple data types inside an object and it's accessible in every, you can actually have access to it. Something like this, let me do. That's for an object, let me just do. Now, for you to write an object, you have to write them in curly braces. You have to write them in curly braces, and it should have a yeah, JavaScript to definitely interpret it as a as an object. And you have name called John. And for object to work, you have to, for you not to have error, but you have to define, you have to separate it by a comma, which also age. And this is because 
there are different types of JavaScript, there are different types of data types in JavaScript, and which are going to go into that data. So if I do If I do console.log me, you will see it's telling me the name is John and the age is 23. Yeah, which for you to be able to define objects in JavaScript, you have to have you have to know about the primitive data type. Yeah, primitive data type are the way in which data are stored in JavaScript. Yeah. There are various types of primitive data types. There are number, there are string, there are boolean. There are, there, are, there are seven different types of seven different types of data types uh, which are primitive value, which is number, which are the number numeric value, which we use, which is one to one thousand. There are strings, which strings are actually means and for string, you have to define them in. For string, you have to define them in probably uh, in quotation or single or a double quote. For boolean, you actually that those are used to test for either the results in which they are going to bring forth is that true or false. The results in which they are going to bring forth is that true or false. And for undefined, they are just setting an empty variable which doesn't have anything. And later on, you can actually assign that variable to a name. You actually assign a value to a name, to that variable rather. And for null, null is just also as an empty variable. Yeah, for symbol, symbol actually, actually unique values. We can be changed something as pi. Pi is the standard variable in JavaScript, which can be changed. You know, the formula are always the same. They are always a constant, they are always constant. You can't change what uh, pi is. And for big in, as there has been so many updates in JavaScript, and one of the largest updates, which was which was into JavaScript was in 2015, that's why it's called EX2015. And thereafter, yeah, so year in year out, there have always been little little updates. And as I uh, um, 2020, there was an addition to JavaScript plan, which is big in. For big in, they are used to put um, more larger, larger integer that than the number type, which is let me see. You want to add uh, large integers, large numbers instead of using numbers. Numbers can actually do that, but it won't. It can actually create some bug in your code eventually that you won't be able to see and it's going to be hard for you to find. So that is why the JavaScript developers actually added added this big in for those added big in to solve that issue. Yeah now so we'll be writing some we'll be defining some let and const variable. Yeah as I said earlier let's define some very Variable as const, and I will show you how const are not mutatable. Can be changed. Let's name equals so the way it is now. I can I can't call me and write name. And uh, for you to, you should know something in JavaScript that there are some, there are some name, there are some reserved word in JavaScript which you can use, such of it which you can use to declare a variable, which is something like name. You can see that I wrote name here, and yeah, it's actually going to work, but JavaScript has actually put a test secretion on it saying that there are some reserved keywords in JavaScript which I can't use. So I'll just I'll just change it to so 
for JavaScript, there are actually there are actually naming conventions, and there are a few ways in which you can name variables in JavaScript. Uh, the ways you can name variables in JavaScript is either you start with numbers underscore or you do something like this camel case and which is actually something which is just a general convention in JavaScript code where you name variables using camel case. You can actually do it like this. It's still going to work fine. If I use the underscore, it's going to work fine. And I come here and I just write console.log it's still going to work fine. And you all see here. You see, I can only allow that. That is it. And for others, if I now come here and try to reassign this name, I just go post that's for name post. I would I won't get an error here. But if I go to my console, I would see an error. It will tell me it's a const variable assignment assignment to const. That is telling me that I have defined that const variable and I can't reassign it to another thing. That is when I said const are not const variable are not being changed. So if you are building a program, you will eventually see that you get to some part and you will definitely want to you definitely want to set some constant days which include the name of the person the age and some other constant variable which you know that can be changed by the user except they are being tweaked so, so at this point do we have any question hope i'm not moving too fast uh, if you have any question you can just do something like that i will i know we are following yeah, six square, you have a question. Can you unmute and speak? Um, okay, my question is regards to the local variable and then um, the, the other, I've forgotten the naming of the other global one. Global variable. And global. You mentioned the um, ob used object variable and there was name and age there. So that's name yeah. and age, are they local variables? Yeah, the thing is for object, object is an actual, is a, is a type of data type in JavaScript. Which are used to store multiple variables. So, if you're actually building a program, you would store some particular set of data in an object variable so that once the, once the user enters those details, it will eventually be, it will actually be enclosed. But for local and global variables, that's why I said if you are writing, if you want to write a function, that's where you've been needing. That's where you've been needing a global or a local variable. A global variable is that's okay, that's why I said that's why I use the analogy of a local government. That for the local variable is only as it's only accessible within the scope of that function, and for a global variable. Is actually accessible in the all around your program. That means you can use it anywhere in the program. Yeah, Obochiku, you have something to say? Please, can you? Okay. Uh, so, um, just just uh, add, it is, uh, for the when you talk about local and global variable. Now, um, remember in the last class where we where we did a function that will actually greet uh Marys or greet anybody actually so think of it like um when you have when you have a, a compound now inside that compound you have an orange tree so that compound is like your scope you have access to the orange tree the orange uh tree that is inside your compound, you can eat the fruit. Now, a global variable is, is more like you have an orange tree outside the compound. But funny enough, 
the branches are spreading into your compound. Please, if the fruits fall into your compound, are you going to say, ah, please, your, your, the fruits fell into our compound? So don't uh, uh, come and collect your fruits. So it's more like you have access, you have access to the fruits that are outside. So it's global. Anybody can actually have access to it. Anybody can eat from it. I don't know if you get, if you understand um, that illustration. That's more like local and global variable. Yes. Yeah. Cisco, do you understand? Yes, yes, I do now. Using this function analog analogy, I do now. Thank you. So a function is like your compound, while anything outside is just is global. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, also, let's let's now continue. Let's now find. Let's now use the let variable. Yeah. So. Yes. Yes. I do now. Yeah, so we can actually see that. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I see that we are actually making use of a let of how to declare variable using let now. Yeah, for let. I declared the let variable and actually reassigned it to another name. So let's check our console to see if it actually works. So I declared it first as Akinriola and I changed it to Bimbo. So that is when I said you can actually change, if you define a variable in let, you can actually change it over and over and over again. And it will it should automatically be updated. If I do something like this before this part, before we are signing it here, it should automatically update. It should give me both. It gives me the first one, which is Akinriola, and it gave me the second one as Bimbo. So that is how JavaScript is. If I define a variable in let and I console dot log it and I come again after a few time and I reassign that variable it's going to okay yeah and as I console dot log it it automatically updates it and tells me okay the name is now asking the other the name is at bimbo so that is the way JavaScript is with let variable JavaScript uh, with let variable can actually, you can actually change it anytime. And same thing for Uber also. Yeah, basically, yeah, open it, you overwrite it, you overwrite the value of that function anytime, of that variable anytime. And it's actually accessible in the code and you won't have any error, which is also the same thing for Uber. But as I said, Uber is already kind of outdated. But one thing for JavaScript is that JavaScript, if you write for JavaScript, if you write a code of JavaScript that has been for the first version of JavaScript, which is like um, 1996, 
if you write the first, the way JavaScript was written in 1996, and you write it now, JavaScript is still going to run. That code is still going to run as if it's a modern JavaScript. One thing about JavaScript is it has something called backward compatibility. If you bring an old, in, a very old code base of JavaScript, and you run it now, the same result that is going to give you then, the same result that is going to give you now. Yeah, uh, because JavaScript, if as I said earlier, JavaScript has something called backward compatibility. But other thing is, if there's a if they are proposing an update in JavaScript for next year, and you are writing that function, and you are writing that kind of update currently now, that function is not going to work. JavaScript does not have a future compatibility feature. It only has it's only backward compatibility. It's only compatible backward. So every time you write, if you pick an holding this, if you can, if you pick an holding this JavaScript. I write it now, it's still going to be the same thing as, as before. So, so that's it. So now let's continue. We talked about something called um, data, data type. That is primitive data type in JavaScript. So primitive data type are actually divided into seven, which I said earlier, which is, Which is uh, are you following me, please? If you have any question, you can actually can actually signify and I would and I would answer your question. You just drop it in the chat box and I will respond. Yeah, so those are JavaScript, um, what would I call it? JavaScript data types, name, the Boolean. Boolean is going to give it a... Sorry, please, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, all right. Yeah, so if I do something like also, Also, the log first name. Still going to tell me it's going to give me the name Akiba Bola. And if I come here and I do something like type of age, type of number, rather, tell me it's a number in JavaScript, which is actually a data type in JavaScript. So for every for every type of data in JavaScript, you actually have if you come. If you if you if you just write type of string, if you just write type of twelve instead of me writing type of number, if I just write type of twelve to tell me it's a number, if I write type of Akimbo Bola, I'm actually having an error here. I don't I guess because I wrote it in small letter. No, because I'm not wrapping it in probably in in um in quotation. That is why it's giving me that error. So if you want to write a string in, Java, in JavaScript, you actually have to wrap it in quotation marks, or else you would get not a number. 
Okay, something something like this. If I do this and save it, and I come here, you tell me Akimbo Bala is not defined. But if I come here and write and do this. It's not giving me an error because I didn't define a Kimber blah. It's not. It's, it can't access this first name because it is not it's not defined. Because I didn't wrap it in a print in a quotation, which is making it undefined. But if I do it like this, it's going to come back to say it's going to it's going to be accessible here. So, so any question or I should just continue. So yeah, so let's continue. Let me just give some more. Let's just be around this this um variables in JavaScript and see how it works. So I will do something, okay. Yeah, can you still hear me, please? I'm just kind of think some yeah, people already yeah, yeah. having some kind of fast with JavaScript. And yeah, using filter already. So if you do console the blog. Uh, the normal way to, if I want to write all this together, I would have to create some space, some artificial space in between this myself so that I will be able to do it with JavaScript to console the plugin. I'll do like this. Yeah, I think, can someone tell me the error I'm having here so that if you're actually following with JavaScript, can someone tell me the error I'm having here? Yeah, I am concatenating, but with the way I want to concatenate it here, I'm actually having an error. Can someone tell me why I'm having the error? Just, um, the class is supposed to be after, after the string. Maybe after the closing string, the plus supposed to be there. Then you continue with another string if you are going to write a sentence. Or if you're not going to write a sentence, you want to call a variable, you write the name of the variable without the string. Uh love it. If I'm going to write a variable, if I'm just going to write a variable, here, I'm going to be using something called template literal. But I'm not using a template literal yet. Yeah, the error is actually that. 
I'm actually using a double quote. And when I wrote this, at this point, which I wrote, I am, at the end of this second double quote, it actually terminates. JavaScript feels that that is the end of the quotation. And it's telling me I have an error. So there are ways I can actually do it. I can actually use a single quotation and do it like this. Yeah, concatenation in JavaScript is actually you writing all, all your variables. You write, instead of you consolidating it one after the other, it's you bringing all your variables together to form a sentence. That is what I'm actually trying to do here, which is to concatenate it. I'm actually trying to um, form a sentence with this variable which I've created up here. So I have to concatenate it to bring it together. And for me to concatenate in JavaScript, I have to use the um, plus operator. For the plus operator in JavaScript, actually, it actually, let me just say, it actually does the work of addition. But for you to concatenate strings together, for you to, for you to bring strings together. Oh, simple so. Where are you confused? Yeah, can you explain where I missed? So I would, I would backtrack. Okay, thank you. Well, I believe that this this plus is supposed to be after, like inside a quotation. You understand? Because what I've been seeing online is like most of the uh, operators are inside the quotation. Like this plus is supposed to be inside this quotation. Then we have another quotation, just like the way uh, Lovett wrote it earlier. I don't know if you understand okay. what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, actually, actually, there are, there are various ways of writing it. You can either I can actually. Do do this, create a simple quote, another, I put the I put the plus sign inside another quotation, create a quotation to create a space, an empty string to create a space, then the first name. But I don't want to go through the stress of writing that over and over again. So I just started it with a single quotation, then in between, I add, I just use the plus sign and use a semi use a double quotation to create an empty string and continue with my variable name. Um, simple. So are you still confused, or I should still explain again? Hello, simple. So okay, you you. Okay, all right. Thank you, simple so. Okay, I have a uh, simple. Uh, Robert is asking a question. I have a question. Is the single quotation not affecting your calling of the view? It's not affecting it. In JavaScript, you can actually declare a variable. With, you can actually declare a variable with either a single quotation or a double quotation. And you can actually use them interchangeably. But if you start your, if you start with a single quotation at the beginning of that variable, at the beginning of that value, you have to end it with a single quotation. If you start with a double quotation at the beginning, you have to end it with a double quotation. That is just the difference. So, Lovett, do you get what I'm saying? Okay. So, so that's it. So, let's continue. I'll just do. Uh, 
And I'm also having a feature here called uh, uh, autopilot. So it's actually giving me a Yeah, please let's let's actually follow the pace at which others are actually following so that we don't confuse them. So we can so everybody can be on the same screen. Yeah, that's it. Let's now see how it goes in our browser. An error here. Seems to not be so good. I'm coming and trying to check. So this um gives some error, it gives me some error sometimes. So So I will try to use okay. Yeah. So we can actually see Yeah, so you can actually see that it's actually work and when we wrote it like this and was for God knows what we mean, so it's not working the way I wanted it to work for that. So I can just compartmentate it like this. So if I don't create this empty string in between it, my code is just going to be modeled up together and there won't be space, something like this. So this is it. Yeah, so this is what I was trying to point, point out that if we don't add that empty string in between it, I think we are think about 23, and I didn't add that empty string to it, it's just going to create 
a straight line without any space. But for us to actually tell JavaScript to create a space, we actually have to give it a I have to give it an empty string, and for the empty string to be able to work, just call it like that, and JavaScript automatically gives you that support. As the language began to progress, JavaScript came up with something called template literal. And for you to be able to write a template literal, you have to do something like this. Template literal are actually easy to write. Just that, you don't have to start with when you want to write a quotation, okay, I got you. You have something to say. Please can you mute me? Okay, so um, uh, so uh, with regards to when we have stuff like this now, so um, let's say for instance, we actually want to write out a sentence. Uh, let's say um, yeah, I don't, I can't remember what the previous sentence was. So you, are, you can actually break it down into, yeah. So just from there now, you can just write, um, you do a string first. So you open you can, can, you hear can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, now? we can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I said, you actually open quotes and then write out your first sentence, probably I am, then you put a plus, then you now add your first name, then you can now add all these uh, spaces in between. I don't know if you get, you can actually try that out. So, okay, plus. Yeah, so we have it. I am Akinola Kutobola, 23 and Lagos. Yeah, so it's actually. So, do we have any question with us, please? Hello, can anyone hear me? Hello? I can hear you. Oh, sorry, can I ask something, please? Yeah, who is that? Uh, raise up your hand before you speak. I'm sorry. <laughs> please, I don't know what are we actually uh, what are we trying to achieve here. Please, I just want to understand, sir. Okay, okay. What you are trying to achieve is to create a sentence with this variable we have created. That's easy. Do you get simple so? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so. Uh, probably normally you wouldn't be creating a sentence using console.log if you are writing a, a bigger program. But just okay, we are trying to introduce our JavaScript work. So we are just okay, you are creating a sentence using console.log and for you to expand everything, for everything to be in one to be in one container. Okay, if I'm to create this normally, I have to create, if I'm to do it single, if I'm to do it individually. I have to create something like I am a, a, a variable for I am, then call it first name, then begin to call console.log first name, console.log last name, console.log age, console.log place. So it's now going to make it different from exactly what I wanted to do. So for this alone, we are at, that's where concatenation comes. The plus sign is actually concatenating everything together. It's like basically adding everything together. So that it's going to tell, it's going to just print it as one sentence instead of breaking it. And for that to be, for that to be possible, to not have to not to allow it be modeled up all together, we have to come in with this. I call it um, empty string. This empty quotation marks. This empty quotation mark tells JavaScript that okay, you have to create a space. You have to create a space in between the uh, each element and for you to come out at one stage. So that is what um, the concatenation does. That's what this plus sign does. And for us to do it again, this is actually 
on yeah console.log is actually going to check what we are doing so it's going to read our program and see what we are going to be doing what we actually want to achieve here so this first name is actually a container that is storing this value called Akimoliola. This last name is actually a container storing the value of Akimoliola. This age is actually a container storing this 23 as a number. So that is what the variable does. Variable is a container. Let me say, variable is like a box which actually stores this item. We have different kind of containers and we store different items in, in our various houses. So we have a container which is stored school book. So let's just say this first variable here, this first name, is actually a big container, big like a big box, which stores the first name, which is Akimiola. And we have another container which stores the last name. So at this point, we are now telling console.log, which is the bigger container. So okay. All this thing, you know, we don't want it to be separate. We want to actually put it in a bigger container. So it's actually going to, so we are going to be able to carry everything at once. That is what, that is what that container does. So, so console.log is a bigger container that contains everything. If we have 1,000 lines of code here, and we do a console.log and we concatenate it like this, it encompasses everything. It just swallows everything up and it goes on. That's just it. Sorry, do we understand the explanation I just gave just now? Yeah, um, someone was raising the ease of hand just now and doesn't get I did they answer your question? Please, if you have any question, you can just raise up your hand and we can actually address that before we move on. So um yeah, I'm trying to give another another way in which you can actually do this. This console.log and using the plus sign and every other thing. This as the language began to progress. Yeah. I'm sorry, Izima. Yeah, Izima, you actually, you are raising up your hand. Sorry, yes, that's not question about location. I don't know. I don't know why you changed that variable from location. But when I was in my um, yeah, he was saying you know, has been, the identifier has been used before, something like that. Yeah, I do maybe I used it somewhere and I'm trying to I'm trying to locate it, but I'm not seeing where it's been used. No, my even on my laptop, I did it in my laptop, but he said this I think I think location probably it's actually a new feature which is going to be added to JavaScript soon, which is actually a reserved word. And okay. If we are trying to use that now, it's going to be telling us has already been declared. That is one feature of JavaScript which I learned. Pointing that if a, if a feature is going to be a, is about to be released, the the features are being implemented, and along the line, they are going to be they are, they are, uh, those um, keywords are going to be reserved, and if you are going to be using them, it's going to be giving you some inbuilt error. Which is this now? We actually used location and it was actually giving us a bug. Probably there's already an update to JavaScript language, which we don't know yet that that location keyword is already been predefined. And if you are going to be using it, it's going to be giving us a bug. Um, do you understand? Yes, I understand. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Chiku, please have your answer. Okay. Um, so, you, yeah, if, if you recall, when we're doing um, windows.alert. So when you, you know that you can also use um, just alert and an alert will just give you an alert box. So the same way that windows object has a location. So if you do something like windows.location.href, you can actually navigate to another page. So location is more like, um, well, I call it routing. So that's why it's a sort of reserved word. That's why um, that is not uh, working. That's why I was telling you, oh, location was already uh, declared. So I hope you understand that. 
Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, open it, man. If the JavaScript language is updated, you don't have to update anything on your system. It's actually updated generally. So I think you just have to read documentation. And once there's a major update to the JavaScript language, it's always a, a press release, something like a documentation to back that up. So you don't need to upgrade, have to upgrade anything. You don't have to do it. You just have to read the documentation and see the next update to your language. That is why it's actually advising for you to read documentation of every language you're going to be using before you do what before you go ahead with it. Because if you actually read the documentation, then some of the errors you are going to be facing will have been stopped in the documentation. Do you understand open man? Yeah, okay. So yeah, let's now go to um the template literal I was, I was talking about. Yeah, for template literal, you are going to do something like this. Fill the same console.log. But now, instead of using a quotation, we are going to be using a backtick. And the backtick is actually located at directly beside the number one key on your keyboard. So if you're actually trying to use the backtick, just check below the, if you're using a Windows system, I don't know how it is on a Mac, but if you're using a Windows system, directly, the first key directly under the escape key, you're going to have your back. So you just write the normal way. And now you are going to, you have to use the dollar sign and a curly braces. So you using the curly braces tells JavaScript, okay, you are trying to access this variable called, they are trying to access this container called first name, as it might be, just the first name, close it back, and you don't need, also, you don't need to create an empty quotation mark, you don't need to create an empty string, whereby you have to be adding, you don't need a plus sign, and you don't need an empty string, automatically by doing this, it tells JavaScript that, okay, I'm to create a space in between each element. Yeah, you have to, yeah, you're telling JavaScript that, okay, it has to create a space in between each element and that space, it, it's automatic. So with this curly braces and, and the dollar sign, that is what yes, we are going to be using now. And it's actually much easier to write. And I think, and I think you just have to thank the developers that did this, that, okay, instead of, I know it's, going, it's always a pain to always write a plus. You are going to now start to determine, okay, do I have to have a space here or don't I have to have a space here? And those alone can give someone a big beyond just writing the simple stuff of using this curly braces. So I've done this. Okay, I am actually a lot of people that first name, last name, based in Okay, um, so just like this, and it gives me sorry, this is not my really good. Don't begin to think I'm going so. The way it is now, yeah, OpenMA, it makes life easy. So if we go back to our script here, you would see that it, it just, I don't need to define the space or anything. It just, <laughs> I got you, you asked my mommy for my age. <laughs> so that is the way it is. It just, for back, it's using the template literal. It makes work easier. You don't need to determine, okay, I have to create a space in between the first name and the last name, or you get to create some imaginary space with quotation marks. So with template literal, it goes a long way like this. And as you keep on going, you would know that it's actually much easier using template literal. For me, I for anything I do, I use template literal because I don't I try to work smart instead of working hard. 
that's for a developer, you just have to create a way to work smart and not work hard. Yeah. So that's how you write with templates later on. So I think does anyone have any questions? So we can so we can just continue. Uh, autopilot. Oh, see, autopilot makes someone lazy, but it's actually we work, work easier. So, using if I'm now going to declare, yeah, if I'm not going to declare this for this, as you all know, that const is unmutable, so I don't need to go over that again. And let you can change let every point in time of it. So, let's now make use of bar. You can see that if I write a equals 10 and I do console dot it's going to work the same way it's going to work from let to tell me console dot log 10 that is a is equals 10 so yeah that's the way it should be you work hard not work smart yeah be work smart not work hard Uh, Frank, you can't actually get copilot just like that. You actually have to wait. You have to actually apply to the meeting list or something like that. So, before you can use copilot. So, I think I just got my copilot yesterday after months of waiting. Yeah, that's the way it is. Wow, still square. Maybe I'm actually lucky. I just got lucky. So, I won't say more than that. Yeah, so that's. That's that about. Um, I think we did actually use this. We haven't done okay. Something like undefined. Now let's now use undefined. This is how you declare. This is how you declare undefined. Let's just um. So this is an undefined variable. So if I now do. If I now do console.log, you would, you would see that it's going to tell me school is undefined, which is actually the same thing. It's telling me, it's just giving me a space, which is undefined. So if I come here, uh, so do that I'm not I'm not here into for school words here, but just know I would I'll just declare my my layout. My layout is to let me just declare. So if I come here and I write school equals I I would not go against any school, but I would not go against any school, please. I, I don't want anybody to come to my window at night and begin to write or begin to write something here. So that is that. So open it, may you have your hands raised. What's the um, question, please? Yes, uh, you, you said const cannot, uh, we cannot change once the value is assigned to const, it cannot yeah. be. Change. But can you add yeah. to the value of const that you have already declared? You can't. You can't, or you can't. You can't, you can't, you can't. You okay. can't. Once you declare a variable as a const, you can't you can't reassign it and you can't even change it. Okay. That's that's how it is. You can't simple so you cannot you cannot reassign a variable. Okay, let let's try it out. Let's do it like this. Const. We will now call me again and say date equals 
six slash seven slash twenty twenty. Now do also I won't you won't be able to reassign that. I'm going to get an uncut very an uncut um an uncut error assignment to a count very it has already been declared so I can't update it at any point in time. I can't update it at any point in time, so you just have to you just have to do what you just have to leave it like that. Uh, simple so we are we are going to be going far if we're going to be using push. we are going to be it's far beyond our scope of learning so can we just backtrack it? I, and I don't want to if I don't I don't want to speak about it now. If I'm going to speak, I'm just going to be drilling people off the scope of what you're actually doing. But for push is actually an advanced course, which is going to be another type of is another type of JavaScript lang uh, JavaScript data type, which is actually an which is actually an object. So that's the way. It is. So yeah, back to if the way it was before, and we do it like this, we will see that I will console dot log school. You would see that school is undefined, and for school being undefined, uh, it's going to tell you. Is not assigned. So if I now come back here and let me now let me now request the bidding of what is her name? Kuludada, is University of Fourth Choice. School of Fourth Choice. Just write Yeah, so for that, an undefined variable is now becoming University of Lagos. So that is it. So you declare an undefined variable, you now have to you now have to reassign it later on, which is actually much common when you're actually doing something. Mubarak, if you actually have a question, you can actually speak. Alright, if you are not here for that. We don't want to. We don't want to do a lot of here. So let's just let's just focus. Uh, so yeah, please. Do we have any question? Yeah. If we do have any question, we can ask. So let's go ahead. So there's something also. Another thing JavaScript does is JavaScript does um, arithmetic operation. And from what we have here. We have there are some operations which JavaScript can do. JavaScript can do the basic mathematical operation, it have an assignment operation, it has a logical operation, and it has a comparison operation. Yeah, for the mathematical operations, you have the normal plus, minus, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. The assignment operation is actually using the equal to. And there's something called strict equal and loose equal. That is, let me let me just okay. Let's, yeah, I think we all know how to comment out in JavaScript. Just use the just use the and for mathematical operations. You can just go. Which is the plus. The minus, the multiplication, and the division. So JavaScript does all that. So you can just do it like this. Let let add equals two or three, and automatically JavaScript does that for us.
And if we check out also, we actually see <coughs> we actually see it does the simple arithmetic for us, it gives us five. If we come here, if we come here again, if we do something like um Actually going to actually going to update it. Okay, five times five equals twenty-five. So the normal arithmetic operations which you do in real life world, um, JavaScript does it easily. So we can actually do something like this and and see if JavaScript is going to actually do that for us. We can do something like this. Let's define a variable. <laughs> Simple so JavaScript don't be defined towards the view. <laughs> or so we can just do something like this and write okay console dot log um. So if I go back here, it would it's actually going to give me the, the, the assignment operator and it's actually going to I can actually change it here again, change it to multiplication. And if you go back there, it's going to actually do what it's going to update it 20. And it does all simple operations for us to. What divided by five is going to give us 0 0.8, and we can actually Mubarak, I don't get your question. Can you can we, are you asking a question? Yeah. So that's that's it about uh operations, and we can actually minus if we do that, it's going to actually give us the same thing. That's going to be minus one. So for every simple operation, we actually want to do JavaScript does that for us, and it's the same thing. So we can actually do something like uh, assignment of operators. Assignment operators is something like this, uh, which is this like this. It's an assignment operator. Just do x x equals ten plus five. So the assignment operator here is the is the equal to. So just the normal simple simple stuff and goes like that. So if we reload it, it gives us 15. So the arithmetic operator here is simply this equal to sign. This equal to is the, is the arithmetic operator in every JavaScript language. And can I actually do something like this? Um, if I do something like this, um, let's... Let's do something like this. X equals so
No, arithmetic operations are not the same as assignment operations. Arithmetic operations are the plus, the minus, the multiplication, the division. Those are the arithmetic operations. For assignment operations, are equal to equal to is this is this um assignment operator which we which is actually used which is the which is basically the assignment as you are assigning it you are telling it okay let x equals to 10 plus 5 which is x equals 15. that means you are assigning um this 10 plus 5 to x that's an assignment operator and for that, you are just telling, okay, do this operation for me. X plus five, that's, you are now doing, you are just doing the normal 10 plus five on the normal without assigning it to a variable. Uh, simple, so you get that. Okay, all right, simple, so thank you. Yeah, so. That is it. We are assigning the if we are assigned this x now, we just do console dot log x and it's going to the normal it's going to give us five, which is the um, application of that. So if we do something like this. Can someone tell me the, the solution to this simple um, like assignment operation? Can someone? Okay, yeah. For well, yeah, just assign. It's just the same thing as saying x x equals five plus five. So instead of writing that x equals five plus five, you just write x plus plus. And if we console dot log x, it's going to be ten by our previous. I it's going to be six. Yeah, that's five plus one. That's x. That's that's from this five. This is our x. It's gotten from it's gotten from this last operation. Here. So we are just reassigning it. That's the x plus one. It's not multiplication. So do that, that is actually a plus. So we are not actually multiplying it. So you get that to look, yeah. If you are using a plus sign, you are actually incrementing. And if you do something like this, you wrote it will be incremented x by one. Okay, I didn't get it. I thought you were writing a multiplication. So if we do something like this, x minus minus, it's going to give us the same thing. That is, it's going to be the same thing like this. Yeah, so it's going to give us our five pack and which is the same thing. So for comparison operators, that is where you use the true or false value. For uh, if you want to carry out a comparison, operator, you are basically going to be using, you are going to be asking if this is true or false. So now let's do something like this. Now let's try out a comparison operator. You're going to do, let John, that's, yeah, a boolean is true for that means if a condition is made, then you have to do it like that. So let's do something like this. Let's a equals no Frank. It's not going to be minus minus. It's not going to be four. Let me look at this operation now. So yeah, we have x minus 5 x equals that's 10 minus 5 that is 5 so if we come down here we now did x plus plus that is x plus 1 that's 6 
So we now come down here and add it x minus minus. That is where we now have it that x is now minus one. That is five. Frank, you get. Yeah, so that's the way it is. So we, are, we didn't reassign it. We just followed up with the former, um, with the former um, calculation, with the former result to give us. So we just upgraded it. So we are decreasing it. Yeah, so let's, let's try this. Ah. Uh, so let's now go to comparison operators, which is not going to be. Let's a equals who can tell us the the result of that our operation here. <laughs> so our operation here is going to be two. Yeah, that means two is not greater than four. But if we actually turn it the other way around, if we do it like this, then that is what a Boolean does. A Boolean, okay. A boolean actually checks if if our if the condition A is true, then it means it's false. That's mm -hmm. how you know. A is that false. Okay. So you can actually take this boolean. The boolean are basically when you want to write when you want to write when you want to tell your when you want to tell your uh, program to tell you the time if if two things are actually true, so that's why you're going to give it conditional statement beyond the scope of this uh, class. Yeah, that's the uh, simple. So JavaScript is automatically going to detect if it's actually true or false. So this is this is how it's going to be. Sorry, can you hear me now? Can you hear me clearly? Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to determine if JavaScript automatically is going to determine if it's true or false. You are not going to be the one to be, okay, trying to write the logic. Okay, tell us maybe this is true. With that symbol, with this symbol you have written, this greater or less than sign symbol you have written, it tells JavaScript, okay, this is it. You have to check if four, four is greater than two. And it's going to print either true or false. It's not going to tell you, okay, four is true, or it's just going to tell you that if it's true or false. That is what a Boolean, that's what a comparison operator does. And that's how it's going to be. So for logical operations, logical operation is actually. So for a logical operation, you're actually telling your, you're actually telling your com, uh, your program to actually run a command, which you are going to be for logical operation. You are going to be using an if else statement, which is quite beyond the scope of our class for now, and probably in our subsequent classes, you would actually be looking at that. So, C square, please. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> this way, they are just they are just being hilarious in, in the chat box. Yeah, so do we have any questions? So let's just let's just point out one or two questions and see how it's going to be. Why we open email you have your hand Please can you unmute and speak? Okay, thank you, sir. So my question is: I understand the part of when you when you create a variable and you don't uh, initialize it. When you run it, you get undefined. But what's now the use case of null? No? Null no is actually the same as undefined. You are defining an empty variable. 
they are actually similar. Just they are, they are basically no difference in between them. They are basically the same thing. Just of different names. So why do we use it for? It's just we have one defined there. You can actually you can actually use it interchangeably. If I do if I do something like this now, let's now try it out. Let if I now go to this place, if I type, if I do something like this, type of school. It's giving us undefined. But if If we are actually trying this out, on um, school is undefined, null is actually undefined. If we now do type of null, let's do something like this. Mm -hmm. Type of null is actually an object. If null is not is a data type, but it's actually much on the angle of an object type. Because in null, you're actually defining it in a in a in a in a, how would I put it? In, a uh, in a container scope of an object. So as I said, they're actually being used interchangeably, but, but for now it's actually an object, not a primitive value. So that's why if I do school, it's telling me it's actually undefined and not no. You get open it. I know, like you, you're not clear. You're not clear, okay. Like, okay, now, if if you are to define an object like, like this, sorry, let me come in while you're doing that. Um, okay, all right. Okay, so um, when you use no, no is actually it's like you saying that don't have a value. It's more like you uh, still doing your own define you know, because you just initialized the variable, but you're not giving it a value. So null is like when you're when you're doing it when you do it that way, you're just being explicit that this should actually not have a value. So you can actually just use it in the change of way. I don't know if you get that. Okay. Yeah. So you can just use it. Uh, you can just say let's so 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 and stop there. It's undefined. But you can also, but the only thing is that null is actually an object. If you check, it's a that is a data type on its own, is an object. But it signifies that um that null. Does not have that what you assign to no does not have a value. You can actually change it and give it a value later on. That's what it means. Undefined is it's also its own data type. It's a, it's a, it, it still means that you can change its type to become whatever you want, whatever data type you want. So it's just you can just use them interchangeably. You get that. So mm, mm, I have another question. Mm, mm. Okay. My next question is, um, can't you run all these commands in your terminal instead of going to your console? Or instead of going yeah, to yeah. your console, can't you use your terminal to do all this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Go on. Yes, we can. But you are actually going to be running on VS Code. So it's actually advisable you test out what you're going to be using on your browser instead of just using your terminal. You can actually, but it's just it's, it's, it's based on preference. That's what it is. It's preference, not it's not actually a static way to do it. Either maybe you test on your console or you test on your terminal. It's just preference. That's just it. So sorry, let me just come in. Um, so for you to actually run it on VS Code, that means you have to install Node. For it to be able to run on your terminal there. So why most people um, 
because when you start talking about uh, people installing Node and all of that, they kind of get confused. So it's easier to just go to your browser and just test it out. So that's, uh, it's just a choice. Some people just prefer running it in their terminal and, and yeah, and it works for them. But um, if you just use your browser, it still works fine. So it just depends on you. The with time you actually do, you actually install new and you get to understand how that works. So, okay, so thank you very much. All right. Well, does anyone still have a question? Yeah. Does anyone have a question? No. Move on, sir. Okay. So I think we are we are done with what we have. So we can now take questions and and answers. Okay, safe way. Please, you can unmute and speak. All right, thank you. Uh, my question is regards to the comments I made. I want to understand, was I wrong or is it that I just confused the group? I don't understand. Which question was that? Um, Ogotchuk's talked about two equals to two in a string. And then I oh. gave the example. So please just throw more light on that. Okay. One thing about JavaScript is JavaScript actually has trust issues. So, Something like this is actually different from something like this. This first one up here is actually a string. This one, for, or this one up here is actually a number. And this one down here is actually a string. So if you are going to do this, you would see that, okay, let's try it out. So can you see now, those two are not the same thing. JavaScript, so is you can actually, if you have a quotation mark over it, it's telling it that, see, this thing is a string. And the next thing you just have to do is, you just have to join both of them together. So if both of them are not the same thing. If you are going to be doing that with Boolean, you are going to be getting a false value. It's called falsy values. That's, let's try it out and see. <laughs> so look at that, it's not two plus two. Two plus two is JavaScript abstract issues. That's what I said. I would. I wrote two and I just used a simple a quotation mark and wrote two again. And it's telling me that it's on the uh, it's what should I call it? It is 22. So let's try this out. Um two equals equals. So let's now see what it's going to give us. Hello, can anyone hear me? Safe squad, you still have a question and you still raise, if you can hear me. Oh, sorry, I didn't know my hand was still raised. My, my point is, eh, 
He said two equals two in double quotes is true. Why is that yeah. so? so? He asked something like that. And then I gave that example of a man in a car and a man outside the car. They are still men. So for that comparison sign, does that my example not fit in? That comparison, I'm looking at two. Same. There are two, yeah. there are two kind of there are two kind of comparison in Puerto. If I'm to use, if I'm to use this, I'm using a single quote. I'm using a single equal to which is actually a loose equality operator. If I use a three equal to which is actually a strict of, um, operator, it can never be the same thing. You are saying it. It's giving me false. Street, street comparison. Two plus two is equals to, is different from two. Um, two into quotation two. That's just it. So it checks the type. To, it checks it to know okay, this one is a number and this one is a string. So a number and a string are not the same thing. So you just have to it. Yeah, but it's actually advisable that you use strict strict comparison when you are when you are when you are actually writing your program because one this one now two equals two is not supposed to be it's not supposed to be true because you are comparing a number and a string but if you're actually using a strict equal a strict comparison it's going to know that this is not a number Yes, the three equal to, that's a strict comparison. That is this one, this one, let's put it like this. If you do like this, this is, this is a loose equality. And if you do like this, if you do like this, which is actually advisable you did it. This is actually a strict, uh, strict equality. So it's actually better if you are writing your pro if you are writing JavaScript to actually use a strict comparison of operator because that's actually going to test your code and say, okay, you have done this. This is what you are going to do at every point in time. So it's going to be it's going to be checking for the data type. Because now the loose equal uh, the loose equality just check okay this is true this is true they are the same thing it doesn't check for the decimal type but if you are using a strict equality it checks for the decimal type yeah so you now get me now uh, yes, sir. yes sir I do, I do. Uh, okay. so a man inside a car and a man outside if you are going to test that there was this man is inside a car and this man is outside. A man is still under a shed, but a man that is outside is not under a shed. Do you now get it? So do that. You have your answer. Sorry, sir. Um, the loose equality does it only work for numbers? If you say if you check if false is equal to string or false, what would it give, sir? False equal to true or false. Let's see. So like the way you checked for the two and the and two as a string, sir. Okay. It's false. They are not the same thing. It's actually testing is true equals false and false equals false.
you get now to do that. I think he has a, a different uh, sir. So you said false is equal to true, as in false is equal to um false in quotation marks. Yeah. Yes. Okay. False. Because false on its own is actually a data type. And false in quotation mark is a data type which is a string. That means you are comparing a data type with a string, and which they are not the same thing. You get now to look. Yes. I think Robert answered that one check for data type and one does one just check for the value. Okay, all right. So uh, I want to thank everyone for staying thus far. This class has been a wonderful session. So does anyone still have any question before we round up? Yeah, what do I have to be? Yes, either a double quotation or a single quote. It is a string. If you put something in a single quote, it's a string. If you put something in a double quote, it's a string. So it doesn't matter if you're using a single string, a double, or a, a, a single quote, or a double quote. So five in a quote, it's automatically a string. Yeah. So, did I, did I answer that or not? Okay. So, do you still have a question? Question on this question. Yeah, Ogoji, could you have something to say? Yeah, I'll mute it. Okay. Um, well, the, I just. Uh, JavaScript is actually something that you actually you do gradually. So just take it a step at a time. Like I say, just for people that are flowing or that are not so confused, I think they've actually read up something. So that's why they are not so confused. So as you're learning, it's yeah, it's actually important that also practice, you read up. I say go to W3 school. I think it's explanatory there. You can take it bit by bit. You can take it bit by bit. And then you actually you understand most of these things, why they happen, and a whole lot of things. You can even read up um, MDN, uh, using MDN. I think it's a documentation for both for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But and check up the ones specifically for yeah for JavaScript. You get to understand yeah MDN. Yeah, you get to understand most of these things. So you don't get confused. See, JavaScript is actually um, it's it's tricky. It's it's intense. So pouring out all of this is it takes a while before you, you get used to it, but when you practice, when you, when you keep it in front of you from time to time, you get to understand it, you understand it better. So um, I really like that we are in class, we are active despite uh, everything. And we are trying to follow, even though some people are like, um, reach, we'll go through the video and all of that. So, and just take your time, take your time, go through the video, ask questions when you're stuck, when you don't understand anything. I'm sure we'll answer you, we'll get to you. So thank you so much for coming. And uh, yeah, let's meet on Slack. All right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Bye.